Okay, so this is part uh, two of the video that I uh, discussed the pros and cons of having a um, fully uh, 3D printed enclosure for the hot end as opposed to the stock uh, i3 architecture. So this is the 3D printed uh, system here that I came up with for the uh, to take care of some of the things that I mentioned in the first part of this video. To recap, one of the things, uh, the main things was to bring the cable to the back, get it out of the way so that the bowing tube or the filament tube comes more in line. I wanted to make this a lot more compact than the setup here so that I can see the part from the bottom. I wanted to um, have a little bit better airflow to the uh, part. I also wanted to uh, have lighting while this does not show the LED system that I incorporate on the, uh, another one of these uh, setups that, are, that is running on another machine of mine, uh, I want to have that provisions for light as well. So I want to have all those things, but I would also wanted to use reuse the same components. I don't want to go too crazy with uh, things that you really don't need. You know, these components work just fine. Some people claim that it's uh, too noisy. You know, I have that has not been an issue for me. I mean, uh, there's a certain level of uh, noise that you're going to have with any machine. You know, you can't make it totally quiet, and uh, I would not want to <laughs> either, because I want to. I like to listen to my machines. I like to know how they're functioning and what is what is going on. And you can pretty much tell, you know, when a machine is uh, when it has a certain sound, it's either working as it should or there's something wrong with it. So that um, also gives you an, an oral indication. Um, or an audible, I should say, indication of the uh, how the machine is uh, performing. And I rarely run my, my machines uh, uh, by the, themselves unattended. I'm always there with, uh, with the machines, especially when I'm run, running long projects. I want to make sure that they're running well and they, uh, it's safe. You know, so for me, it's it's not an issue. Plus, the machines that I run are in their own room. They're not in a bedroom or a living room, so I don't have those issues. So I reuse the same components, and there's, like I said, there's really no need. I mean, you may gain a little bit more efficiency in some of these uh, fans that people are putting in their systems, uh, but it's not really necessary. I've been printing with these machines for many, many years. They produce some very nice parts, provided the machine scale up very properly. And so I wanted to see if I could uh, tap the, um, this system here. Weight-wise, all these components that I show here in uh, PLA, this is PLA, um, and you can do this in uh, ABS, as I recommend. Should it's, they should be done? And I sort of recommend if you're going to do something like that. So, you know, ABS is a much uh, better material in terms of uh, heat uh, resistance. Uh, this will work fine, provided you know you have a good uh, cooling on, on the system here. And so far, I have been running a similar setup on one of my other machines. I have several of these uh, i3 megas that I run, but this will also work on the i3. Um, S version, I think they're both the same architecture. I, and so PLA has been uh, just fine, uh, you know, for my setups here and as I'm showing these parts here. So this uh, orange part, as I was saying in the first part of the video, is actually the uh, to mimic the plate. I had to design this part first so that I could get all the geometry that you see here, these tabs here, the, the back uh, uh, cover for the, uh, the connector uh, box. Uh, all these things, uh, even this section right here, is all based on this geometry here because I wanted to follow that through. And as I was saying also in my er uh, earlier part of the video, the um, earlier ones that I did, because I did several versions of this, uh, had also were a little more bulky. We're almost uh, fully enclosed like this uh, setup here, and uh, they followed this uh, again this geometry here. But I started cutting down on a lot of that unnecessary uh, material and, in particular, weight. So this is a very lightweight setup, and this whole uh, system here, it's about the same weight as this uh, system here with this plate right here and the cover, which is what I'm replacing with this uh, setup here. So the pros with this system here, uh, as far as weight, not an issue. Uh, architecture, uh, you know, it's a lot better because... Um, well, I, I shouldn't say a lot better because this has uh, some some features that I'm going to talk about very uh, very soon here. Uh, a very clever uh, points here that I, I need to make for anybody that uh, has one of these machines and has not considered this uh, is 
deep as I had been looking at this system here. And I arrived at these uh, conclusions basically by uh, designing, you know, from scratch and then just putting a lot of thought into into this uh, process here. But what I like about, let me put it this way, what I like about this setup here, not because it's my own design, but I really like the fact that the fan is in the front here. This is very, very compact, like I said. I can see the parts much better here. These provide better airflow to the to, uh, for part cooling from the rear fan through the uh, ductwork here. Um, and the cable, the main bulky cable that sits in the front here is out of the way. So from, an, from that aesthetical point, um, yes, uh, it's got a, a, you know, some, some very nice pluses. Plus it's a very spiffy, um, very spiffy system. Okay, so that's in place. So once the fan is in place and uh, you route the, the bottom uh, cable through here. Now I did another one that has a, full, a slot fully to, uh, cut on, on the top here. So you, all you have to do is pop, pop this in, on top like that and slide it. But this is slides on, on the tubing because this is not attached with the screws like my earlier ones. This just simply slides the, the, uh, a sort of a tongue and groove uh, uh, design on the part. And so that's how it sits. This gets bolted, you know, to this part here, to the uh, uh, belt, um, to the belt clip at the back. So there's another part here that I don't have it right here, but it's a belt clip. It's a kind of a clamping uh, belt clip that gets uh, put, put right here, where uh, uh, it gets attached to these uh, uh, two pieces here. It's very secure. This also gets attached at the bottom here, just like a, like this one is attached. You know, it's got points uh, of attachment at the top through that plate and two another two bolts or two screws that attach at the bottom here so it's it's well secure so from that point this has those benefits there uh, all the um, the negatives that I don't like so much about this is the cabling cabling of this fan now has to be routed to the to the back uh, that's you know and the light there's a little light uh, a little strip of three LEDs uh, 12 volt LEDs that I typically put underneath the uh, uh, I typically put underneath the fan. This is the fan that goes in there. I haven't detached this from from this plate yet, but this is the fan that goes in the, inside this plate here or this cover, and the little light just gets attached to the bottom of this with an angle 3D printed plate that faces the lights downward, and so it provides lighting that way on an angle, so it's, you're able to see the parts very nice and, and uh, unobstructed. So the compactness of this I like, like the fact that the cable's in the back, connectors in the back. This fan connects real easy from underneath here to the back. Underneath the hot end uh, um, temperature sensor, you know, the, um, and the heating element both connect underneath here, so that's not an issue here. It's only the wires for the fan and, like I said, the lights that I need to route underneath here and to do that in this particular design I added uh, these channels here if you can see there's two additional these things that are semi-circular that one and that one on the side because I didn't know which side the fan would uh, fit better left or right but it's got those provisions and those are channels or that have been extruded all the way to the back to allow a um, for a guide for the cable so you can put the cables of the fan right underneath there and then they slip underneath through the back so it's clean and well attached to this system here so that's some of the things that i like some of the things that i don't like about this uh, uh um, the setup here now let me go back to the simple and and kind of a uh, very homey looking uh box here <laughs> having said all what i said here I started looking at this and I go, well, let me think, because any cubic engineers, I don't think they're, 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 they're dumb. I think they're very bright people. Um, they have put a lot of thought into this machine. And the more I look at this machine, the more I, I try to better some of these things, the more I think how they probably were thinking when they did this machine. What caught my interest when I was doing these parts is I went back to this and I go, there's gotta be a reason why they laid this uh, this way not only from a cost point of view it's more beneficial to have simplicity uh, in part manufacturing but also ease of access for maintenance for the user so that you have to consider those things and when i saw this box i go wow this box the, the pros of this box is, is very simple you just remove the screws obviously you have to remove the screws they could have made it a little simpler but the screws is fine but once you remove this all the fans Everything that's connected to this is, is already installed here, so it's, it comes out as a whole unit. 
and you have easy access to the, the connector through the front of the machine. So from a maintenance standpoint, it's a lot easier than having to turn the machine and go to the back and work from the back as you would with this particular setup here. Um, so that is a pro from a, uh, an access uh, point to the machine from uh, a service, uh, from servicing the machine. The other thing is that when they did the cable, and of course they had to bring the cable over here, you know, to make that access easily accessible to the user, make it easier to us uh, to fix uh, the machine, replace um, uh, these components, and you know, at least uh, with that respect. From the respect of accessing the um, the hot end, um, same thing, no issues there because you know they're bringing this direct, and it's uh, once uh, once you get this out, it's out of the way, and you, you can easily access the hot end as you would you know in the same uh, setup here. So you just fit the hot end right there, put the collar, the uh, the retaining collar under in, in between the, that plate, the the, the, the top part, portion and the hot end, and you clamp it. Very simple, very effective. So from that point of view, um, no issues there. Uh, again, functional, uh, very well laid out, uh, metal plate, very good, uh, and uh, an aluminum material here to make this lighter. Now keep in mind that a machine uh, works a lot more efficient. When in terms of 3D printing, imagine a, an inkjet printer. If you've uh, <laughs> kind of ponder on uh, why inkjet printers are so fast, because you know those components are lightweight. You know that the heads are super lightweight, uh, and you have to keep that in mind when you design uh, 3D printers or whatever mechanical device that you need speed uh, and uh, you know precision. The lighter you keep in this particular case, that for the 3D, this 3D printer, the lighter the head is. Or the head assembly, the faster the machine is going to um, is is going to uh, accelerate, and the faster is going to stop. Now the analogy that I always use, you know, when talking about uh, these things that need to move with the precision and being lightweight, is if you were to spin a bicycle wheel versus a truck wheel, which one would take more effort to move and to get it to stop? Obviously you know, the truck wheel is going to take more effort because of the mass. The more mass, same thing here, the more mass you put on a head that needs to move, you know, with precision and, and speed. If you want speed, you got to keep the super lightweight. So I think uh, in Cubic, uh, they must have been, and I'm pretty sure they did, because, you know, when you build machines like that, you already know those things. So the reason for this system here, which I'm giving it uh, quite a bit of uh, uh, credit, a very simple, very lightweight. All the parts are there. Of course, you don't have the full stiffiness of the uh, air distributions I have on mine right here. You know, on, on the both sides of the uh, using that type of duct work, and you don't have the compactness of this. But everything is self-contained here, and it's very lightweight. You know, to uh, to begin with. Um, the other thing that caught my interest is why they put this fan facing this way. They could have put this fan here and put these connectors on the side. You know, the the, the, the connector they could have done from there. As far as the connector is concerned, they could have done it like that. And got the connector even more out of the way, offset from the center where the Bowden tube comes in. And the only reason that I can think of, uh, from a logical standpoint, is that they put this fan facing this way, not only to cool the fins of the uh, hot end, but also to provide a little bit of cooling to this fan. <laughs> uh, I hope that makes sense, at least to me, and that, that would be the logical thing to do, because, you know, it's like, well, I'm cutting out because I'm uh, going uh, a little bit longer than... Uh, Typical on some of these videos that I'm making, but the, those are the uh, the things you know, the pros and cons of uh, both of these uh, setups here. Uh, having spent close to uh, a good solid week designing several of these things and just tweaking it and, and tweaking it and making it uh, a little more compact and a little more uh, uh, efficient. So having said all that I said in these couple of videos, I'm still not. Uh, decided on whether to retrofit all my machines with this assembly here or just keep the original stock assembly. Let me know in the comments below what you what you think, what your thoughts. 
Your comments are welcome. This is Mario Budema and Michael Flight once again. Thank you for watching.